Hi, my name is Ian Taylor, and I'm Director of Product Innovation here at BB Life Science Informatics. Uh, thanks for joining me for this brief lesson. I'm just going to be talking to you a little bit today about overlays, um, batching, and describing a little bit what iteration is and how it works in the layout editor. So to get us started, I want you to imagine that you've done some beautiful clustering. Maybe you've used Flowsum, and you've also got a T-SNE plot associated with that. And you want to now look at the clusters of interest across T-SNE in the most efficient way and kind of try to understand how those different clusters sit on the T-SNE plot. Well, of course, if you've got a T-SNE already set up, go ahead and duplicate this layout so I'll have a fresh one later. If I just overlay all of my clusters onto T-SNE space, we can see where they all sit. However, this is going to get a little bit messy at certain times. Here we have a small enough number of clusters that maybe it's not so bad. But it's a little bit difficult to tell, say, for example, where cluster 8 is relative to cluster 13 because they're different shades of yellow. And so I'd like to actually batch across all of the clusters and see them overlaid onto T-SNE. So as you can see, to perform an overlay, we just drag and drop our populations of interest onto the T-SNE plot. But now I want to basically overlay by each individual population one at a time. And so that's where batching can really be a handy trick. Notice I've already set up a particular group called cluster exports, which I'm going to fill with our, our clusters. So selecting all of these populations, I can right click, choose export concatenate, and go ahead and perform an export. Um, I just like to remove the beginning here of the name of our export, and also change the name so that we're only looking at the last unique population name, which will tell us which cluster we've actually selected. Open that in the existing workspace. And it will automatically load into the group that we've currently selected, but we want that in its own special group. And that's going to be important because the way iteration works is we perform iteration on a particular group of samples. So once you've got your samples into their appropriate group, reselect that group, we're going to overlay just with the very first flow sum population, which is flow sum population zero. And now we should be able to see where TSNE sits with regard to our flow sum population. However, notice that TSNE rescaled to the scaling of our population here. So we need to actually adjust that. Looking at TSNE 1 and TSNE 2, I can just very quickly adjust the scale by going in here and choosing a linear scale. And that should actually looks pretty nice. We'll just leave it as is. Now I need to do the same thing for TSNE 2. Again, just switch to a linear scale, and that ought to scale it fairly nicely. Um, we may want a little bit of extra white space on either side, but I'll leave that for another lesson. Okay, now we've got the overlay of interest. We're actually looking at our two subpopulations of interest. I just need to change my legend section to show the annotations of interest. So not subset name, but rather our sample name. I'd also like to include annotations in this. So I'm going to add that annotation there. And uh, I want to change the colors. So in an overlay, to change the colors, you just click on that colored swatch and switch the color like so. I'm going to make my background T-SNE actually kind of a, a black color. I'm going to make my population of interest, in this case, starting with flowsome population zero, a dark red. Next, we need to make sure that our background population stays static. And so this is essentially a way to help a certain population avoid uh, or evade the um, iteration settings is to right click on that population and choose set as control. And you'll see that population becomes italicized because that one is now going to be treated as a control. Make this legend a little bit larger. And actually, I think I would like these fonts a little bit larger. Again, if you double click, you'll get to the graph definition window. And within there, you can update your legends to be maybe size 12. I'm going to make them, uh, let's see, Verdana. We like the Verdana font here quite a bit. Okay. And I'm also going to change the object line to none so that it's just kind of clear and shines through nicely. Last, I, lastly, I want the annotations to look good. So I'm going to just move that so it's a little bit more aligned. And next, we need to think about the actual batching uh, as a last step. So now that we've got our control set the way we want, we just need to go back to the Layout Editor tab 
and make sure that the batching is set correctly. Currently, we're, batch, we're set to batch across a group in the iteration section, and that group is usually gonna be whatever group you have selected in the workspace. Here, it seems to have gotten set to sample of interest, which is a, uh, a group that contains one single population. And so I actually wanna switch to my cluster exports. And now what that's telling Flojo, or the layout editor specifically, is I want you to bring in samples from the cluster exports, which is gonna be our Flowsome clusters alone. And now uh, I'm pretty much ready to batch. I just need to choose how many rows I wanna deal with and how many columns. So in this case, I'm gonna use four columns and that means we're gonna have three rows if we have 12 clusters. I'm sorry, we have 15. So let's actually make this uh, five columns, which will mean three rows, okay? And now I'm ready to batch, but um, maybe I wanna preview what that's gonna look like uh, for the next sample. And so what you can do is change your iteration. Now iteration um, has a wide variety of different options, but the one we wanna use now is sample. You can also batch by panel or batch by keyword if you wanna get a little bit more advanced. But for now, this is okay. And you'll see that the value for that first sample is listing just my flow sum population because that's the population that's not held as a control. And if I switch to the next sample, It'll show me the next sample, next sample, next sample, next sample. And in this case, because we exported our Flowsome clusters, each sample is a cluster. So looking beautiful. Um, now, now I really am ready to batch. So in the batch section here, you can click create batch report. And it's actually going to batch to whatever location you've set here. By default, it's gonna be our new layout, but you can also batch to printer or to a web page or directly to PowerPoint if, uh, if you prefer. I always recommend if you batch locally first as a new layout, then you can always export that new layout that you created or afterwards batch to the file of interest. And wonderful. Now I can actually really clearly see where every single one of my flow sum populations is sitting uh, relative to the global TSNI uh, that we've been looking at previously. And so some populations are quite numerous like population 13, some are quite small like population eight, and if you remember, population eight and 13 were earlier difficult to distinguish simply because their color shading was pretty much the same. But you can also have a case where multiple populations are sitting right on top of each other. And this is another really handy trick to be able to visualize those populations easily. All right, thank you so much for joining me for this brief tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.